feel like I'm dealing with crisis after crisis tonight. Let's move on to uh, the next crisis, which is the migrant crisis, which doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon, despite the promises from the government, despite the promises from the Home Secretary, Priti Patel. Because this weekend alone, 1,100 migrants crossed the Channel on small boats to the UK. So, so dangerous. On these tiny boats crossing the Channel, more than... 40 people had to be rescued by an RNLI lifeboat in Kent, including a baby that was just 16 days old. What is going on? Well, France has accused Britain of of failing to provide the funds that they promised to tackle the problem. And by funds, they're expecting £55 million, which the UK promised, Priti Patel promised, to help French forces to try to stop people crossing. 624 people reached reached the UK on boats on Friday. And another 491 on Saturday. Uh, What needs to be done? Uh, Let's speak to Connor Tomlinson, political commentator from Young Voices UK. Uh, Connor, good to have you with us. Uh, This, gosh, it's, it's just, it seems like crisis after crisis the government is dealing with. However, this is a crisis which is, which it seems that they just cannot get on top of. Definitely. Uh, Good evening, Gloria. I wish it was in better circumstances that we were being talking again. But unfortunately, I I looked up uh, this time, the statistics of this time last year. And on September the 11th, 2020, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, around around, uh, October the 11th, 2020, there were about 200 crossing a day. And it's called a crisis then. Now it's up to a 500 day average. Um, So the, the problem has escalated completely out of control and then we also have that combined with the recent issues uh, in, in the last year with not only Hong Kong accepting lots of migrants which completely is it's fine because that was our fault putting that country in a particular situation but also Afghanistan as well and so it creates an unsustainable system of where we're having uh, with already a uh, housing shortage and generation rent my lot having trouble getting on the housing ladder uh, particularly with Michael Gove now taking over the, the prospects aren't looking wonderful for our home ownership but also apparently an NHS which needed such uh, severe protection despite it's funding going up year in, on year on year that we will have to be locked in our homes it's not overburdened it well now people are coming off of boats and planes etc and can use it at the point of access and, and every year the funding isn't going to be able to keep up with that so i don't understand how the government can't tackle with this this very difficult problem we, we have no shortage of compassion for these people in the mm. uk but we do unfortunately at some point have a shortage of resources and we have to say we can't be the world's caretakers um we, we do have to deal with this problem we can't take everyone at once and, and have you use all of our systems no matter how much we understand we're a wonderful country so what exactly is going on because we, we got that news from Priti patel from the home secretary that they were going to give 54 million pounds uh, to france to help tackle the problem now france saying they haven't got a single penny what's going on there I believe the funding was actually meant to be made conditional on France preliminarily stopping more migrants coming across as a sort of good faith gesture to show we are not just giving up on the problem and letting them come to Cal- from Calais to the UK because we don't want them to be our problem. Um, as Ang- Angela Merkel burdened them on the EU and then, as we said, we didn't want to take them, then they suddenly part of the fence. Uh, France wasn't too keen on having lots of people there either. So she's saying, essentially, we will give you this money, but as soon as you show that you have the capacity and the will on your side to do something about it, and but then, then we'll, we'll... they up. wouldn't need the money if they did have the capacity and will, if, if that makes sense. If, it seems to me we're going round and round in circles here. I, I don't think they actually have the will because I think there's a lot of posturing on the French side, not just it's, it's a punishment for us, for AUKUS, but also because Emmanuel Macron is, is coming up on the election. And he recently decided to accuse Marine Le Pen of not doing enough on, on the migrant issues. And also, uh, um, I believe it's Michel Barnier who turned around and said, oh, yeah, we need to have uh, strong borders because he's posturing about the French election as well. I think there's a lot of battling about the migration issue on the French side. And so if he's seen to reduce the migrant population in, in France, inadvertently shutting them off the UK, it makes him look like a stronger leader and he has a a better re-election prospect. So if that's the case, how can they agree uh, to accepting £55 million to to try to stop the migrants from crossing? Surely that's just counterproductive. It goes against what he's trying to do, how he's trying to be seen uh, in France. 
I wouldn't be shocked, honestly, if, if the money just got lost in the system as it usually does. I mean, over here, a lot of the time when we try and deal with these issues as well, um, it's not necessarily Pretty Patel who's, who's, who's at fault. I, I don't think she's done a great job in dealing with the Home Office and, and all the stonewalling. And I actually sat in on her speech on Tuesday at the Conservative Party conference, and she was saying, I'm cutting the head off the snake of human trafficking. Problem is, it's, it's very much a hydra. There are a lot of networks everywhere. And if you don't have a Home Office which is willing to work with you instead is willing to run around and say they're bullying, uh, being bullied by her constantly, uh, I think the, the issue lies more with the, the unelected, unelected bureaucrats who, who start the system and let the money disappear into a massive black hole and don't actually carry out the orders at the top. I mean, Connor, you've you've already illustrated how much of a problem this is, a problem that isn't getting better. In, in fact, the, the opposite. What can be done? Do, do you even think the 55 million goes far enough? Or even if you're saying that it's probably going to be lost, swallowed up, what, what needs to be done? What do you think the Home Secretary should be doing? Oh, I think, yeah, the money's too much of a drop in the ocean. I think what we need to be doing is actually penalising the countries that these, these people are coming from, unfortunately. A lot of them are conflict zones, um, but that means we can put pressure, especially on their international aid or sanctions, etc. I know the Trump administration did that with a lot of South American countries when a lot of the caravans were coming up and, and mm. threatening the border there. They've now got record uh, border crossings over in the States at the moment because President Biden said, you should surge the border, please come. Uh, so I think actually targeting the countries which are causing the problem in the first place and, and allowing the people, the flux of economic migrants to come to the UK and burden these countries will stop the problem at its source. So when you when you sat there listening to uh, Pretty Patel on, on Tuesday, um, mm. did, you, did, you, did you believe her? Did, did you have faith that she is the person to deal with this issue? I'd like to. I did sit on a, in on a few politicians' talks, and a, very, a lot of them, such as Sajid Javid, were very uninspiring. I, I couldn't buy into what they said. Mm. I think Pretty Patel does actually have a, a fair amount of frustration with... Uh, not only the people on the other side of the aisle in the, in the Labour Party who constantly decry her for trying to deport known criminals, uh, and also the, the bureaucracy in the Home Office and the Met, as we saw in the recent headline where she's lost her temper over them with the Sarah Everard case. I do think she wants to solve these issues. I think she's mired in bureaucracy. And, and unfortunately, for a lot of her rhetoric, uh, I came away with saying, OK, Pretty, I, I believe you, but please try and deliver this time because the electorate, and especially people like me who are happy to see her appointed, um, our, our faith is, is waning. Mm. Oh. So, gosh, I, I don't even, it's, it's getting to a point where you're so frustrated that this isn't being dealt with. But then can you, can you understand why, why it is so difficult for the government to deal with when they are, when they are dealing with, with France? And as you say, that the will just isn't there. Yeah, and it's also a symptom of us being punished somewhat for Brexit, of course. I, I think the main thing that the Conservatives need to do is, is, again, act on their promise of, we've ended free movement. Well, you can't say that when you do have all these, these holes in, in the net, uh, essentially. I, I would say they really need to fortify their border policy, otherwise they're going to have just as many holes in the ballot box as to where people turn around and, and decide to spite them for that. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be voting for Labour either, because, of course, uh, British Patel was very much right in saying our, the opposite party will have much more lax border policy and actually drive down wages from, from the number of influx of migrants and also drive up the social safety net. But it does mean a lot of people, including myself, who went to the party conference because they were invited, not because they're a party member, have become very disaffected from voting for that sort of strength mm. and, and national sovereignty in 2019 and now see that not being delivered. So I, I think, uh, although I sympathise with the government dealing with France, dealing with the internal bureaucracy, and a lot of the British people saying, hey, we want compassion, we want to see these people here, there's, it's a practical and it's principled issue of you come in legally and we have to have a, some sort of cap just so our social safety net can survive. Mm, you've got the, uh, the Nationality and Borders Bill uh, coming in. Do you think that would make any difference at all? Uh, I would be interested to see the amendments and specifics of the bill. I, I understand that they're going to be arguing that back and forth. I know there's uh, going to be a lot more penalties for human trafficking and things like that, which I don't think anyone in any of their right mind would be able to object to. But it's again, it comes down to the enforcement cost. If the unelected people that you don't actually know the names of that are sitting in the offices putting all these processes through um, don't do that, then it's going to be a moot point. And hopefully my actual net hope is that Dominic Rabb's willingness to address the uh, Human Rights Charter and update it somewhat might have some carryover to all these human rights lawyers who continue to kick the can down the road on, on the appeals process for, for people who have committed crimes in the country and, and currently can't leave. They can, you know, the planes can be stopped on the tarmac. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that's something that can go a long way to uh, enforcing the law equally in the country. I mean, Connor, listen to, listen to how desperate uh, we're getting, desperate the UK is getting. So 
more than 18,000 people have succeeded in reaching the UK on board these small boats. Uh, that's according to uh, some data from, from PA News. This is despite the border force now introducing pushback tactics, if you like. So essentially they get on jet skis and they try to, to push the migrants on the boats back into French water. Does that not just sound so desperate? Yeah, we, we are at the end of our tether in terms of the amount of resources, not just internally to support these people. You know, we're, we're housing hundred, uh, lots of people in very cramped hotel rooms and having to pay the actual hotels uh, endless amounts of money. And if you look at the reviews of these hotel websites, the, I know the Grand and Scarborough had a lot of uh, review building on their website because a lot of the guests couldn't get along with the people that were housed in there who were used to living in very different conditions. Um, so not just domestically, but also in our enforcement measures, we, there is a massive enforcement cost, and it's not just draining our social safety net, but it's also draining the morale of the country, uh, both the people that are carrying it out and the people that are watching it and on social media. Because unfortunately, everyone, our, our camera phones have made us all journalists these days, and all they've got to do is, is stand on the uh, on the seafront and film them coming up. The only concerning thing is, as well, the willingness to deal with it back here. Um, the only thing Pritchett Patel has done that has knocked a lot of people's faith is that she tried to suppress the videos coming out Rather than deal with the actual issue, she uh, mm. kicked up a fuss and tried to say, can we have some sort of injunction online to stop these videos of these people coming out the beach? I would say that is that that's suppressing citizen journalism and it's saying, hey, we don't want to admit this is an embarrassing failure on our part. Even though we're trying to deal with the problem, we can't. I'd say tackle the issue at its heart as best you can, uh, rather than trying to, to put the blame on the population who are just expressing some frustration they haven't been dealt with. I think this is... Um this is something you're seeing across the board with the party that I've been talking about, Kwasi Kwarteng. He's been having to uh, do the rounds today, try and give up, give some answers as to how he's going to handle the energy crisis. But also uh, Trevor Phillips uh, talking to him and interviewing him on Sky News did ask him about this crisis. And he said the UK is working uh, very effectively uh, with France to uh, to tackle migrant crossings. That is far from true. The, the energy crisis thing is a really interesting thing to hit on as well, because that's like the migrant crisis. It's a product of our international relations, and, and we can only use international relations to solve it. Uh, if we were still supplying our gas, for example, from America, who was a net gas export until President Biden turned off the pipeline on day one, Keystone XL, mm. cut all those jobs, mm. uh, we wouldn't be relying on Russia and Qatar, who have horrendous human rights records for all of our energy supplies. And there's no excuse to say, oh, uh, that the energy crisis, oh, he did it for green reasons. Well, uh, as policy director of an environmental network. Um, I, I know that year on year under the Trump administration, it may sound counterproductive for everyone who thinks Trump was uh, uh, the second coming of the devil, but um, he actually oversaw year on year America reducing their emissions the most out of any country, and he wasn't even in the Paris Accords. And that was because they domesticated gas production was actually a net exporter. Um, if we work with international relations, we can not only reduce our, our migrant issues, we can also reduce the energy crisis by supplying it from better, more reliable sources. We just have to get ideologues essentially out of the way, because uh, you're not going to get to utopia with these kind of terrible policies. Gosh, it seems like so, so many factors, right? Just just affecting us uh, negatively uh, here in the UK. But Connor Tomlinson, a political commentator at Young Voices UK, so good talking to you. Uh